This is a caterpillar that is in the position to start pupating right there. So the brown tail moth was introduced sometime in the late 1800s and it very rapidly spread throughout New England and the infestation extended all the way up to Nova Scotia and down to Long Island. By the early uh, 1920s, the population started to retract to a few islands in Casco Bay and the very tip of Cape Cod and nowhere else in the Northeast. We saw a much bigger spread throughout the coastal areas of Maine to the point where in 2005 we had about 20 four to 25,000 acres that were defoliated. And then by last fall, we saw that the defoliation had increased to about 64,000 acres. So we're seeing a expansion of this insect that we haven't seen in over 100 years. It is a serious concern for communities that are infested not only because these insects um, feed on a number of different deciduous trees and they do cause severe defoliation and can cause mortality of these trees, but what is of utmost concern to communities and homeowners is that they possess what are called urticating hairs that contain a toxin that um, when you come in contact with these hairs, it can cause a severe rash. But in heavily infested areas where you have large numbers of caterpillars, these hairs are in the air. Um, someone, they settle on the ground, but if someone is raking, mowing their lawn, playing in the leaf litter, uh, it brings them up in the air and you can have respiratory problems that, that result from it as well. Yeah, these, the overwinter, there's so many overwintering nests. Yeah. So we'll collect the caterpillars and the puparium and then the egg masses and then a lot of the time we'll bring that back into the lab um, and we'll have uh, just a bunch of rearing experiments going on. So we'll try to rear those out um, to a certain point and then um, we run experiments where we expose them to different enemies. The one that we're focusing on right now are the parasites. The parasitoids of brown tail um, include a couple of different wasp species and some fly species. The parasites go into the caterpillar, um, eat them from the inside out, and then help us control their populations. And so we're looking at management strategies that will work with these rather than interfere with their activities. We're looking mostly around south central coastal Maine. Our epicenter, I guess you could say, is Bodenham, Maine. We are told that Bodenham, um, this, particularly the stretch between Bodenham and Topsom, was really the, the hardest hit that um, we were pretty much the epicenter last summer. And so this one could die. Mm -hmm. and, or it could also emerge as an adult. There are a number of um, communities that we're working with um, in the affected area and there have been very proactive um, citizen groups to uh, work with trying to help manage this infestation. This one over here. We're also really practical folks here and we wanted to tell people what they could do today to make their lives uh, better in the face of this infestation. So we, the library, went ahead and purchased a 16-foot pole pruner that could be borrowed by library patrons and um, taken and, and so that they could make a difference for that one tree. Um, if they had a small orchard, they could conceivably clear it and that those would be healthier trees when the caterpillars uh, were due to hatch out. That one Dead will die because you're going to squish it right now. Yeah. <laughs> It's very important to me to be working on a project that is of high significance to the local community here in Maine. When we are lucky enough to have uh, University of Maine scientists 
feeding us that latest information, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a great collaboration. Anything to kind of help the community and to really control this pest species is what I want to do.